Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So, I won't necessarily call this part two of Robot's Winter Project, but I'll call it that just to give everybody an update. Uh, been pretty busy here at the Vespa shop here in San Diego, so just haven't had the time to really get um, into doing lots of videos for you guys or even work on my own uh, POS right here. It's a beauty. Um, the good thing about it is it rides pretty nice, but I have discovered there's some problems with it. Um, I'm gonna do the approximate 6,000 mile service, which means you clean the rollers or replace the rollers, oil change. I'm gonna flush the coolant, uh, flush the brake fluid, all that stuff. Actually, I already flushed the brake fluid. But there's a problem. I know sometimes it has a high idle. And I wanna show you two things you wanna look for when you have a idle, high idle. Actually, three things. And ironically, this has two of the problems that cause a high and erratic idle on a fuel-injected Vespa GTS 250 or even the 300 Super. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, of course, I could see it really easily if I plug in the electronic diagnostic tool into the scooter. I could see a lot of what's going on and understand what those numbers mean and the parameters. But there's some basic things you could do as a do-it-yourself mechanic, especially as these scooters are getting eight, you know, up in age. Um, you know, a check engine light comes on or idles weird. You, it's like you're in the dark on what to look for sometimes. And I had a little bit of fun while I was at the front and the rear rack were pretty corroded. We did a batch of powder coating and I thought, well, let me just take the rack apart. And you're wondering how you do that. This is the original factory chrome front rack and you're able to pop these, this little clip out right here and shift this whole entire uh, rod out of the way and you can pop the springs out of here. The springs kind of clip around there. Pull these little nylon pieces. So pretty much all these plastic pieces have to be removed and I separated this, the, the mounting for the rack, the rod and the springs, took them over for powder coating. And did the same with the rear. It's pretty much exact same steps for the rear. They don't have these little nylon things in there, but you can't leave any of those pieces in the powder coat process. Uh, ironically, you leave a spring in there and they seem to hold up. I mean, it probably sometimes crack a little bit, the powder coating in between, but they usually hold up pretty good. But just change up the look instead of rusty chrome, you know, powder coat is a little more durable. But let's get right to some of the problems I've diagnosed and show you the steps that you should take to figure out what's going on. All right, so let me pop the hood. The symptom I'm having is the idle sometimes just gets high and erratic and the fuel economy is not quite what it should be. And I'll show you some of the things to look for that cause for the fuel injection system, not the meter, the fuel correctly. Well, how about I'll just show you how you diagnose one of the most common problems with this age of a GTS. I'm gonna go ahead and start the scooter. I can tell you one thing, I hear an exhaust leak. So that's a hint to one of them and I'll show you what I'm gonna look for. So usually you don't wanna have a really warmed up engine but you could use carbon choke cleaner. And this is your intake manifold. You can visually look for cracks in it. Uh, sometimes it'll have cracks and also sometimes the, the surface of the intake manifold will not seal to the actual cylinder very well. And usually you can diagnose that by just spraying a little blast of uh, carburetor spray on the intake manifold boot. And what you're looking for, or actually listening for, is the idle will actually change. You also sudden spray it and it changes. That means there's extra air sucking this carburetor spray and the, the engine's burning it. And um, that's a good easy way to diagnose an air leak at your intake manifold. It's just regular carb spray. You gotta be careful because this is a highly flammable. Uh, engine's not all that hot right now. But I definitely don't have an air leak at the intake manifold, not an issue. But that intake manifold's pretty old and that's an issue. So the next spot to look for an air leak on a 10 plus year old Vespa GTS 250 or even a 300. Well, you wanna pull this left side side skirt off. There's a nut right underneath here and a screw right here. Go ahead and separate that. And the camera's gonna show what's going on. You see what's going on? There's a broken hose right there. So let's just go ahead and fix that. 
And is what you gotta do is cut that little um, hose clamp off and we'll just replace it with a standard worm gear hose clamp and a short section of new fuel line. Just be careful because they are plastic, the barbs on there. So it's pretty easy and there's just very little clearance. And the way you wanna get these existing you know, one time use hose clamps, just get a, a diagonal plier and just grab where there's a seam on that hose clamp. And sometimes you pull the hose off or you just carefully get your knife in there. I'll slice in my, you know, put a slice in the existing hose and you can just pull that right off. And this thing is like gummy and gooey. It's just old hose, it's just falling apart. And we'll do the same for the piece up there. My head's probably going to be in the way. Let's see if I can get this. But I did a video on this a couple of years ago on you know some customer's bike, the hidden little spot where you can have an air leak. And sometimes you could. This one's a little harder to get access to, but you sometimes got to nibble at it with a diagonal plier. And if you can't get it uh, to the tab. You can always just grind or cut the, um, the clamp as well. Taking the actual canister out is pretty difficult. And sometimes you can just carefully pull on it and it'll pull right off. So I got two number four hose clamps on the Scooter West web store. They're HCL4 Mini, I think is a part number. And Fuel Line 5 16 Find that on Scooter West. Just only need to order a foot, it's way more than you need. And just go ahead and cut a small section of it. And unfortunately it's kind of tight quarters working up there. Nice and easy when I have a lift that I can work on overhead. So two parts you gotta do, you put it on the bar right here. And I got one hose clamp that I could start it. So you kind of got to just get a good angle where you can get access to the hose line. Don't go just enough to tighten it onto the, the barb. That's all you need. And there we go. And we'll get the other hose clamp. We'll probably have to use a stubby screwdriver. And we'll get that right onto the bottom of that carbon canister. And let's see if there's any chance I could do this with just a regular screwdriver. I think so. I could get a good angle on this. Of course, I'm covering what I'm doing in the camera. Sorry. All right. So there you go. That's all been repaired. And pretty much if your scooter's 10 years old, it's probably that line's going to be deteriorated and need replacement. All right. So we fixed one intake air leak. The intake manifold doesn't seem to be an issue. Um, there's one more air leak that really affects how the scooter operates. Uh, these scooters have a sensor that's called an O2 sensor. Um, it kind of measures essentially the mix of air and hydrocarbons to, to make adjustments to the fueling. And it requires a very well sealed exhaust system. So if you have exhaust leaks, I can hear the exhaust leak. It sounds like a little, little bit noisier than it should be. So I need to look for exhaust leaks. And if there's any exhaust leaks, you're gonna have extra air from the outside get introduced into the exhaust stream. You know, every intake and exhaust pulse are like actually pulses of gas. Well, it draws in the extra air, it throws that sensor reading off, and it usually causes for idle issues and poor fuel economy is what I've noticed when you have an exhaust leak. And there's the most common exhaust leak on these is the bushing, the exhaust gasket bushing. I've showed how to replace that in the past, old videos. We're gonna pull the exhaust off and then take a look at that bushing. And then we're gonna look at one other place that I've covered in the past that could be a major exhaust leak and a major headache to repair sometimes. So let's get right to it. So exhaust's a little warm. Just keep in mind if it's really hot, not something you wanna to touch. 17 millimeter socket and a T40 Torx driver. Uh, we're going to go ahead and loosen the exhaust clamp. Wow, somebody has that pretty tight. And if it's galled, you may want to put some uh, penetrating uh, lubricant. Even this WD-40 will do the trick. Just loosen that up. 
And now we'll go ahead and remove the exhaust. You need your T40 Torx driver and there's three of those fasteners. And I'll tell you when a lot of people change out these exhausts, they don't replace that bushing or they don't know about it or some shade tree shop doesn't have access to the spare part. And I can tell this one's a little stripped. And you know when you have a stripped Torx, got to get a hammer. So that one's to me stripped a little. So you get the Torx driver kind of lined up and a couple good wax as you do the trick. Then just make sure you're pushing a lot of pressure. Yeah, so let me tighten that thing a little tight. So, but we're good. May want to replace that screw. Don't really want to use a, reuse a fastener that has damage to, to the head. At this point, you're kind of pushing up on the muffler. And we'll go ahead and pull this off. Ooh, I feel a little problem. Well, let's look at the exhaust gasket. It's in pretty bad shape. See that exhaust gasket? There's not much left of it. It's just burned up. Somebody reused it. Unfortunately, they don't get that much life when they're just kind of degraded to, you know, just the, the metal mesh that's in them. You know, they're just kind of having exhaust leak and that's all there is to it, so. This bike only has 6,000 miles on it. But, you know, somebody changed the tire, they probably didn't put much care into the, you know, when they were uh, pushing that on. Um, the nice thing is the newer original Piaggio ones are made to be better quality and they can get a little bit more life. Here in the service department, usually we just change them all the time, but that definitely needs to be replaced. So we'll go ahead and expand that, replace that. But there's one more problem where I have a, a major exhaust leak that I just noticed. So right when I took the exhaust off, the manifold shouldn't be doing that. That's it, the exhaust manifold. And I see a very rusted exhaust nut. And if you look at the other side, there is no, it's a missing exhaust nut. Another common problem is sometimes those manifolds crack, especially with an aftermarket exhaust system. Uh, that's not the case. So the actual elbow manifold. All right, so we see a problem. This is really loose. I'm gonna reach up here. There's a sensor connector. It's this little bracket right here. There's, you can't really see what I'm doing, but there's this, the four pin connector or sometimes a two pin if you're on the different years of the 300 used a two pin connector. And it's pretty difficult to get to, but we're gonna go ahead and disconnect that connector. I'm gonna pull the manifold off. And the other problem, sometimes they zip tie this O2 sensor wire to the, the coolant hose up there. So we'll have to go from the top and loosen that. And go ahead and get a 10 millimeter wobble and go ahead and remove the manifold. Now I see a very rusty fastener. I know the camera isn't getting this. It does not look pretty. And I can tell you the other side is just suspenders, no not at all. We'll see what's left there. It's probably going to be a broken stud in the cylinder head. And I think maybe a year ago, a couple months back, I, I did a video on um, replacing the exhaust studs. Uh, this bike has had kind of a hard life near the ocean, and I'll show you just what happened. So one's missing all the way. The other one, the nut is actually seized to the stud. So you want to replace both the stud and the nut manifolds hang in. So I got the exhaust manifold off. Uh, the actual manifold looks fine. There's no cracks around this O2 sensor boss. This is your sensor itself. Uh, the sensors do wear out over time. So if you have high miles, they're usually fairly reliable. Uh, the sensor's got this little rubber boot that holds it to that bracket. It's all pretty important because of the wiring's hitting other exhaust components that may melt and then add a zip tie holding it to the hose and it plugs into the thing. But I could tell there's been a problem. It's only been held on by one stud. You see how it's like white on one side and then you see the black carbon coming out of the other side. So it mounts just like that. The black carbon is escaping because there's either no stud or it's broken. So let's take a look. I suspect it's broken. Wah, wah, wah. 
So I got one stud that's out that I pulled out. The other one's just straight broken in there. Well, you got to either partly drop the motor typically or pull the whole entire motor out to repair that stud, drill it out. And I've covered that in a video in the past. Huh? I guess I'll save that for another day. Get that fixed, put a new exhaust gasket, and I bet this thing's going to idle like a kitten. So that's pretty much my part two of my winter project. Wah, wah, wah. Not riding at home tonight, I rode it here. It's 10, 10 p.m. here at the Vespa shop. Got the hardware. I'll come back to this another day. So I'll get that stud replaced. You can check out my other video on how to do that. And I'll put the muffler on um, in part three and hopefully we'll get the rest of the service done. This thing's gonna run perfect. It still doesn't look perfect by any means whatsoever, but that, I'm saving that for part four. We'll see what we're gonna do next. So thanks for watching. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Uh, sometimes you just can't finish your projects on your own. If you encounter this at home, I wouldn't suggest doing any type of jerry rig. Just put it away and you're just going to have to order parts and come back to it. And that's the way it goes. And even in a professional workshop, sometimes I say working on older scooters or scooters with an unknown history, it's like opening a can of worms. You don't know what you're going to find. There may be only one worm, one problem, but it could be a whole can of them. So see you on the next one, Robot from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. And again, I thank everybody for watching the videos, and I hope they help everybody out, whether you just brush right through the video and find the content you need, or you watch my videos all the way through. Um, I just want to help people keep their Vespas on the road. And I thank everybody for supporting our scooter shop here in San Diego, our little scooter shop, ScooterWest.com. Been around for 30 years, been doing the YouTube for a while now. Uh, consider subscribing if you haven't. There's lots of other good old content I've done pretty much on how to service pretty much any Vespa. See you on the next one.